go. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. First of all, uh, bienvenidos, amigas y amigos de Jerónimo. Welcome, friends of Jerónimo, the film. Uh, we're, so, we're so glad to have all of you here for this special event. This is the first uh, US viewing of uh, Joseph Jun's film, Jerónimo, that we've all uh, been invited to enjoy and been supporters of. My name is Solomon Choi. I'm, I'm one of the organizers here. Thank you very much uh, for joining us this, uh, you know, this, this evening to uh, commemorate this uh, wonderful event. And Joseph is like a younger brother to me. He's uh, somebody who I met through a, a mutual, not even friend, family member, Joseph's uh, older cousin. And have been just so proud to see Joseph's career and passion just collide to uh, really make this amazing film that we're going to enjoy for the next 90 minutes once it starts. Uh, but with that, I want to recognize um, a, a gracious host, uh, Daniel Kim. Um, so for that, first of all, if we can just give Daniel Kim a round of applause for the amazing... Okay. And, 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 we, and we thank him for his generosity. And, uh, and I'd like to bring up the host and the owner of this amazing venue that we're able to enjoy, Mr. Daniel Kim. Well, thanks, Solomon. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. You know, um, Joseph is a good friend of mine, so is Solomon. Uh, people don't know this about me, but I'm actually a fourth generation Korean from Hawaii. And so a lot of what Joseph was talking about uh, the Korean diaspora in Hawaii and Cuba, a lot of us don't really have a lot of knowledge about our heritage. And so I thought it was really cool that Joseph would delve into this aspect of, I think, you know, Korean um, culture and history. And so I'm really glad you could all come here. We've got a lot of, uh, it's not the end of the food. We have tons more food coming after this ends and a lot more drinks. And so please, everyone enjoy yourself. If you have any problems, just come see me. I'm gonna be on the side. But thank you so much for coming and hanging out, supporting Joseph. Cool. Uh, today, this is like one of the most special moments in my life because uh, not only is this the first screening in the U.S., I, I was grateful to uh, be given the opportunity to present my film in Korea at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs exactly a month ago, which was well received. Um, but because I'm with uh, the special supporters of Heronimo over the past three years, as many of you guys know, um, I've really given my life and soul into this. Uh, I, I had not imagined that this will take a three-year project. It began as maybe a 20-minute YouTube clip uh, for something that I can you know, dedicate three, four months of my life, but I decided to work on this full-time. My parents were concerned, obviously. Uh, <laughs> they had no idea it's going to take two full years of work. Um, I'm so I'm, I'm grateful. Obviously, this is a VIP event, so all of you guys are very special. You're here either because you're one of the most generous supporters. If you have not supported me, but you're here, do not worry. You can still help me with the release. Word of mouth and distribution going uh, down the road. One good news is that I'm talking to one distributor in Korea, and he wants to help me uh, have a theatrical release by the end of this year. So we are looking at anywhere from 50 to 150 uh, theater uh, release uh, probably in the fall, so I'm excited about that. To be true, truthful, I, I need to recognize every single one of you and call out your name, but just a few. I want to just recognize a uh, film crew. Uh, they all came to Cuba without pay, and then they donated their time and efforts. Kyun, who's with the camera, if you can just raise your hand. He came, to, he came to Cuba with me uh, with nothing but passion and belief in my, my guidance. And my younger brother, William, he's also an attorney. Well, you want to get up? Yeah. I, I, I pulled William to go to Cuba with me uh, right after he finished his bar exam. So he came thinking that he's going to enjoy the sun in Cuba and drinking rum. But then... <laughs> <laughs> he was carrying around all the equipment for the next two weeks. And uh, so we lived together in New York City. And since I quit my lawyer job, uh, he's been the one who's been supporting me financially. <laughs> and mind you, he's a human rights lawyer. So imagine, you know, my parents, one became, both went to law school, one became a human rights lawyer, the other became a filmmaker. So they're slightly concerned. Um, <laughs> uh, I want to recognize... So and Lee, so and she, how, so you got, 
For those of you who are familiar with the Korean pop or Korean culture, she was a very famous singer in Korea. This is maybe 10, 15 years ago. I used to listen to her songs when I went to middle school in Korea. Uh, now she's an attorney and she's doing many things in New York. Uh, but she has volunteered her time to, to sing the main theme song of this song. So you'll, you'll get to listen to that at the end credit. Um, I'm really grateful for your support, Sean. Also, Kyung, where's Kyung? Here. And George. So everyone knows Kyung because she's, she's a mayor of Korean American community. Right? <laughs> she's a, but the, the, reason, the reason I am highlighting her is not to recognize her necessarily, but because did you guys know that she had a son, prodigy son, who scored the entire film? So she, her son, Matthew, scored all the music that you hear in the film. And I, really wanted to recognize it because it's one of the, one of the best quality music that I, I was, I could have expected for this film. And um, yeah, <laughs> just, a, just a few more, <laughs> just a few more people. Aeyoung, where's Aeyoung? So Aeyoung, um, Aeyoung is I guess slightly older version of Korean American mayor in New York. <laughs> That's alright. <laughs> but did you guys know that Aeyoung is the one that, who actually made the first uh, documentary about Korean Cubans more than 15 years ago. She was a producer of a documentary. And uh, she's been very supportive throughout the whole process, so thank you, Aeyoung. Uh, just a couple more people. We have some dignitaries. Uh, so uh, we have Deputy Ambassador to the United Nations from Korea, Korean government, uh, Ambassador Park. Would you just raise your hand? Uh, Thanks for coming. We also have a couple folks from the U.S. State Department who are political advisor to the North Korean Committee at the United Nations. I don't know if that's the right title, but Jonathan and David, if you could just rise and be recognized. Yeah. So thank you. I hope you find the film interesting because there's elements of North Korea, Cuba, America, South Korea, and so much more. Uh, last but not least, and I'm going to briefly pass on the floor to a Korean American Jewish rabbi, uh, Angela. I, I had an opportunity to meet her six months ago at another separate Korean American event. And um, I, you know, as you can see, the, the whole film is about Korean diaspora, and more in particular about Korean Cubans, and more specifically about this once unsung hero named Heronimo Lim, who dedicated his life to stay connected to his homeland and to sustain his sense of identity. And one example I constantly turned to was the Jewish example, because Korea lost our land only for 40 years, but Jewish lost, they lost their lands for more than 2,000 years. And, and yet, there's a very strong sense of identity. So I just asked five minutes ago if Rabbi can deliver a quick word of blessing and thoughts. So please. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. You and I just hold on to this the mic. Okay. Um, I actually have diaspora experience on both sides of my family. My, my Halmani, Hwan Geran, she was actually among the early Koreans that were actually basically kidnapped out of Korea during the Japanese occupation in the 1920s. So she grew up from age five into her adulthood in Japan. And my um, grandfather was one of the you know resistance fighters to free Korea from Japanese occupation. And he went back and forth sending like underground messages to Korean nationals in Japan. That's how he met my grandmother. And every time he went to Japan, my grandmother would get pregnant with another child. And my mom, <laughs> my mom was the fourth of nine. So she was born in Japan, given the name Yukiko because she wasn't allowed to have a Korean name. She was later renamed Solja when they moved um, back to Korea at the age of five. So when she was five. So anyway, my grandmother though, like basically was part of the Korean diaspora for over 30 years. Um, and, and just to know what that was like and the longing for always going back home. And also the difficulty, frankly, of going back home and actually having her Korean neighbors feel like now that she spoke Korean with a Japanese accent that she was a foreigner in her own native land. So there's a lot of that whole story that was on that side that I hear all the time from my Korean side of my family. But my, um, on my Jewish side, we were in a diaspora for 2,000 years, just a lot longer. And, and I think that one of the lessons we learned is how do you maintain a sense of connection to a place? And not just a place, but to the aspiration of what a home is. And I think that um, the, the good thing that my 
both sides of my family taught me is the way that you actually can create home no matter where you are, um, and also how you take home with you. So I think one of the challenges that I feel, especially as a, as a, as a person who's very deeply involved in the Jewish world now as a, as a rabbi, but much less involved in the Korean community, um, actually Kyung was among the people that brought me back into the Korean community by having me speak for the very first time to a Korean audience two years ago at the KCF, um, Giving Summit, um, and that actually led me to the to the event that I had with Joseph, and I met him, and I'm here tonight mostly just because I was so deeply moved by his passion for this project, and um, and just wanted to be here to support it. But I think that um, the idea that we can um, learn lessons from each other in these communities and and understand what it is to create a sense of home, no matter where you are, and actually that that exile um, actually can create a, a heart of longing that can actually be in sometimes much deeper and stronger because you have to actually figure out who you are, not just from a place, but from the things that make a home. So, I hope we'll ex get to explore that a little bit through this movie. Thanks for for letting me have a chance to say. Thank you so much. No, Thank you. That's wonderful. Uh, so lastly, um, I want to thank Daniel Kim. You know, this is my wildest imagination to be able to host the first variety screening at a flat like this. Um, so I'm going to introduce Xander, but I hope Xander doesn't think that this is like an average New Yorker's lifestyle. <laughs> 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 Solomon Young, uh, thanks for volunteering. He, he's the one who took the initiative to, hey, Joseph, let's host the the first VIP screening at Daniel's place. <laughs> and I'm grateful for his support all throughout, one of the most generous supporters over the years. Finally, Xander, do you want to raise, uh, rise? So he's a grandson of Heronimo Lim. His family, uh, so his mom is the daughter of Heronimo. They recently migrated to Miami, and then we invited Xander uh, for this special occasion to be the representative of the Lim family to watch the first uh, screening in New York. So. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Sander. Yeah. yeah, he looks like 30 years old, but he's only 16 years old, so he's <laughs> he's getting used to things. Um, so the movie is 90 minutes long. Um, and are you guys ready? Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. Good afternoon. Today, the United States of America is changing its relationship with the people of Cuba. The most significant changes in our policy in more than 50 years. We will begin to normalize relations between the two. We just found out that our host is actually a Korean Cuban, third generation. And uh, I had not imagined I would meet a Korean Cuban like this. This is the home of a third generation Cuban family. This house is decked out with everything that's Korean. magical spell on this mysterious man, Hedonimo, Korean surrounded by his Cuban comrades of the Communist Party, a later wearing the tradition of Korean handbook and playing Korean drums. And our efforts to make a film about their father, and dedicated to drive us all around Cuba so we can trace the footsteps of Hedonimo. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 